Hi folks, Damon here. So it's been a little while, and part of that is because I've been heads down working on something new. Today, I want to introduce the Amazon EMR Toolkit for VS Code. I'm pretty excited about this, so let's dive in and let's see what we're gonna talk about today. I wanna to cover a few different things. One, I wanna talk about the EMR Explorer in VS Code. Two, I wanna talk about the Glue Data Catalog Explorer in VS Code, and then Three, I wanna talk about how you can create a local EMR dev container so you can actually build Spark jobs locally before deploying them to any EMR deployment environment. So let's take a look. With the EMR toolkit, you can either install it directly from VS Code, just go over here to the extensions pane and search for EMR. You'll see the Amazon EMR toolkit right there and just go ahead and hit install. Once that's installed, you'll see a new icon show up in the left-hand pane here. That's the EMR icon. When you click on that, you'll see a few different explorers for your EMR resources. A couple things to notice. One, you need a local AWS profile set up and able to access your different EMR environments. You'll need access to the AWS API, of course, to list the EMR and Glue resources. And then if you wanna use that dev container, you also need Docker installed on your machine. Let's take a look at the left-hand pane here. First, we've got the EMR explorers. The first one is EMR and EC2, then EMR and EKS, then EMR serverless. With the EMR Explorer, you can also list clusters of different types. So you can include cluster states that are running and waiting by default, or if you wanna look at terminated clusters, you can go ahead and do that as well. And you can see I've got my Pi Arrow cluster there. If you had any steps that ran on the cluster, you can look at those steps too. I don't have any steps on this cluster, so I just get no steps found. You can also see what apps are installed on the cluster. With the EMR containers, you can view job runs. Doesn't look like I have any on these uh, EMR containers right now. And then with EMR serverless, you can also view job runs. So if I expand this serverless application right here, you can see different EMR serverless applications as well as whether it succeeded or failed. If a serverless application fails, we pull out the state details so you can see exactly why that job failed. Those are the EMR explorers. We've also got the Glue Data Catalog Explorer. So down here is my Glue Data Catalog. And you can see I've got Damon's Data Lake in there. You can view the different tables in here. And if you right click on a table, you can even view details about that table. So let's look at this clones table. And when I pop that open, we get some more information about Damon's Data Lake clones. You can see here, there's a timestamp and uh, UTC ISO now and different column names. And then on the right hand side, the different data types for those columns. And if you have a struct column, we pull that out and convert it to JSON as well, so it's pretty easy to read. Now, my favorite part of the EMR toolkit, the dev container. There's a whole bunch of new EMR commands in the command palette, and one of those is create local Spark environment. When you click on that, we'll ask you a few questions. One, we'll create a sample job, so we ask you what sample job type you wanna use. We'll do PySpark here. You pick an EMR release version. This corresponds to a specific Spark version. So let's pick EMR 6.7.0, and then the region that you wanna pull the container from. All the EMR containers are region specific, so pick the one that's closest to you. I'll choose US East 1. And then finally, you wanna choose the authentication mechanism for your container. When you connect into the container, um, you need to have AWS credentials if you wanna be able to access data on S3. So you can choose a few different options here. I'm gonna use a .env file, and I'll put some credentials in that .env file. Once you finish that wizard, you get a few files created over here in your directory. There's this emrlocal.md. This is a file that just kind of gets, gets you started with how to use this local container. There's a demo PySpark script that shows you how to instantiate the Spark session and read some data. And then there's the dev containers in here. First, let's get credentials inside that .env file. Great, I've gone ahead and done that. Second, we need to authenticate to ECR. So the image is pulled from ECR and just copy and paste the command that is in this EMR local file. That command is specific to the region that you chose for your container image. That'll log you into the ECR account. And now go ahead and open the command palette and just choose reopen in container. If you haven't built this image yet, that'll go ahead and build the image and then open your VS Code environment inside that container image. This is pretty much an EMR environment. 
Uh, it has Spark, it has all the libraries for Spark, and it's pretty much like connecting to an EMR cluster with Spark installed. So we're in our contain container environment now. If I go ahead and open up a command palette, I can just go ahead and say PySpark. And now I'm in a PySpark shell. Because I configured my authentication as well, um, I will also have access to data on S3 and will also start the Spark history server for you when that container starts. So if I run any jobs in this container environment, I can actually just go to localhost 4040 and I can see all my Spark jobs there. So now we've got PySpark running in our shell. Let's go ahead and read some data from S3. If you've ever tried to use a local Spark instance to you know, even just read some data from S3, there's a bunch of different configuration options you have to go through to make it work. With this container environment, we've done that for you, and it's got all the EMR bits on it that you're used to with EMR, so it can just read the uh, data from S3 straight away. So if I do a df.head here, that'll go in, pull in that S3 data, and show me the data that's in there. And then I can do anything that I would normally do as part of my Spark job. So I can create a new PySpark job here and work with the data locally as if I were on an EMR cluster, for example. The other thing that's nice about this is I can even create a new Jupyter Notebook. And let me take that code that I had in here. I need to create a, uh, a Spark session. This Jupyter Notebook it's connected to the dev container. That dev container has Python and the uh, you know, IPy kernel installed. So you can begin to build your Spark jobs using Jupyter as well. This is the same exact code that I might run on an EMR cluster. I'm just creating my Spark session and reading from CSV. And you can see inside the Jupyter notebook, I've got everything I need here as well. So pretty sweet, right? I've got my dev container. I can um, you know, use PySpark or Spark Shell. I can create a notebook locally and I can build my Spark jobs locally. Now, if I want to push this up to EMR, for EMR serverless, we've got an additional command in the extension that allows you to publish a job to EMR serverless. You can do this either within the dev container or from within VS Code itself. I don't install EMR in the dev container by default at this point, um, but I can do that pretty easily by just clicking install in dev container. Once that is installed, I can go ahead and use the EMR serverless run job option. That'll prompt you again for a few different options. First, you need a place to copy your PySpark script to. I'll just use a, a demo bucket for that. So decort demo code, and I'll just call that PySpark. Second, you need a job role. This is an EMR serverless job role that has permissions to access the data in S3. Then you need your EMR serverless application ID. You can get this either from the console or the uh, CLI, or over here in the EMR serverless explorer, you can just go ahead and right click and copy the ID from there and paste it in there. Finally, pick the code that you wanna deploy. I'm gonna do this EMR tools demo. You get a little pop-up box that confirms you wanna go ahead and deploy and run this job. Click yes. And behind the scenes, we copy that script up to S3 and submit a new job to EMR serverless. So if I go ahead and expand my serverless app here, you can see there's my new job that is scheduled. And if I refresh this, it should start running pretty quickly. I've got my serverless application started and I can see that the job will start to run pretty quickly here. If I want, I can also get the status of the job via the command line. So just an EMR serverless, get job run, and specify the application ID as well as the job run ID. And now we can see that that job is running. If I refresh over here, we can see it's running right there as well. Once that job finishes up, if we configured um, out, an output location for it to write data to, uh, we can go and look at that output location if we configured uh, S3 logging for the EMR serverless job, we can also see it, um, the output from that job and the S3 logs too. So that is a quick intro and overview of how to use the new Amazon EMR toolkit in VS Code to both explore your EMR resources, write local Spark jobs, and even deploy them to EMR serverless. Give it a try. If you have any issues, feel free to reach out to me. I'm Decort on Twitter and of course here on YouTube. And you can also go to the AWS Labs Amazon EMR VS Code Toolkit repository and create an issue in there. 
I'm keeping an eye on that. So I will take a look and uh, if you have any questions, help you as best I can. So again, you can install that straight from VS Code or from the VS Code Marketplace. Thanks again for joining. Hope you have a great one. Bye.